public understands they're part of this grand and lethal experiment without their knowledge or consent, and that they're not only expendable to those in power, but in fact a rapidly increasing liability, and that is the fact of the matter. Those in power know the planet can't support populations anymore. What would we expect them to do? What? I report storms batter aging power grid as climate disasters spread. A breaking down of the system. It was never sustainable, to be clear. It was never even remotely sustainable. But now the biosphere collapse has beat the power structure to the intersection. They are doing everything they can to further facilitate the fastest possible collapse with a thinning of the herd as a part of that equation. I'm going to read a letter sent to me by an activist last week. He said, hi, Dane. Regarding the I-81 incident in Pennsylvania, he's talking about the massive traffic jam I brought up last week. Could that be connected to the surfactants that we know is in many snow samples? We've tested and determined that. Surfactants are what makes soap soap, which would make, obviously, in theory, any of this frozen material hits the surface incredibly slick. Here's what the trucker states. Quote, I've been driving a semi-truck for 15 years, and what happened to me last Tuesday around 8 p.m. Pacific time in Las Vegas shocked me beyond belief. He further states the temperature outside was 53 degrees Fahrenheit. I was driving 60 miles an hour on a 65 limit, and it was raining. Suddenly, my trailer acted like it was hit by black ice, almost lost control, and just reduced speed without touching the brakes. It was like a black ice event. He then states, two miles ahead, another truck was totally destroyed due to this slippery foaming detergent from the rain. That's what surfactants look like. Again, surfactants are what makes soap soap. We know it's in the mix. We know it's in the precipitation. We know it's in the frozen precipitation because we tested for it and found it. He then states, now they have the technology to create black ice just from the rain at high temperatures. This is scary for all the drivers thinking it's just rain, but in fact, it's a death trap. Thank you for all you do. With respect, Dan. Thank you, Dan, for sharing this with us. On the subject of self <laughs> What good are roads if you can't drive on them or if food can't be delivered on them? Underground tunnels, however, aren't being rained on by surfactants. Yes, surfactants, soap, in our rain. Everything's fine. Back to sleep. It's Australia again. Rain bomb hits Sydney earlier than expected. The forecasts are scheduled weather's all over the board, if anybody hasn't noticed that by now, because not everybody gets the new script, so they're completely unclear about what's scheduled. That's what's happening. From this report, New South Wales... <laughs> Something about the scheduled weather here. Um, when I checked earlier, I knew that. Um... Something was going on because we were seeing this increase, but we were also seeing rain on this day. So there it looks like there actually will probably be some rain um, when the sun starts to go down because we are seeing a temperature decrease overnight from 12 degrees to 6 degrees. So if we're seeing a more than a 3 degree drop overnight, then we know that there's going to be chemicalized nucleation happening. But yeah, I saw this, this increase from 3 degrees to 12 degrees, and I knew that, of course, there's not going to be rain on, on these days. <laughs> and right here it's saying, a low of 2 and a high of 9, but snow. And for my American viewers, that's a low of 36 and a high of 48 with snow. residents are staring down the barrel of even more flooding in the coming days as the heavy rain begins to hit the coast. The rain bomb has hit earlier than expected, currently concentrated in the coast of Sydney. The region has already been hit by devastating floods twice in a month. We had the droughts, the fires, everything. Breaking down society, crushing crops, miring the human race in turmoil, and it can't concentrate on tyranny at that because the planet is superheating. They need every card they can play to try to mask the severity of total meltdown. What about California? From numerous sources this year, snowpack falls to one of the lowest in 72 years. Follow me through the succession of headlines, and then we'll try to make sense of it. Also from last week, Sierra snowpack worsens, falls to lowest in seven years. What happened to 72 years? Then we had this from last week from the Sacramento Bee. California drought, driest rainy season for Sierra snowpack in 100 years. And then there's this from many major sources. California, worst mega drought in 1,200 years. Which is it? All over the board. We are being fed lies from every imaginable direction, but here's the bottom line. It's exponentially worse than any of the most dire reports you're seeing from any mainstream source. Exponentially worse. They're trying to pacify populations until the brutal, bitter end. And that end draws very near on the current course. Climate change may push the U.S. toward the Goldilocks zone for West Nile virus. This report states the rising cases may be a sign of what's to come as climate change brings more drought and pushes temperatures toward what is termed, quote, the Goldilocks zone for mosquitoes. Not too hot, not too cold. Scientists expect the West Nile transmission to increase across the country. They always know, don't they? They know when the pandemics are coming. They know when the spread of diseases like this are coming. And let's weave this into the equation. From a previous broadcast, I covered this. Engineered mosquito release, 2 billion of them in California and Florida. And guess who's involved with that? Good old Billy Gates. Imagine that. And now we found this science study. And I'll get to this in the next. You know, we released... Two billion mosquitoes, and we're predicting that there's going to be a lot more mosquitoes this year. Broadcast. But the study outlines the use of weaponized mosquitoes. Why should this be any surprise at all? And one more footnote. Geoengineering Watch has now received the results of dozens more precipitation tests from the U.S. The results are beyond horrifying. Watch for a near-future post from geoengineeringwatch.org on this. Global power structures continue to play their cards, and they are not done. Not by a long shot. Continuing with that theme, this headline from last week. Brace for a summer of water emergencies in Utah. They always know. We have those who orchestrate the cutting off of precipitation 
then putting out these so-called science data through their corporate media so that populations are conditioned into thinking this is somehow just some sort of natural consequence going on. Most wildfires in large parts of the West would be followed by several extreme rain events. How in the world would they know this? They can't predict hours in advance anymore because the climate engineering operations are so totally disrupting any natural patterns. And the script reading so-called meteorologists need to summon their courage, band together, stand up, and tell the truth. Yeah, definitely predictive programming, not weather prediction. No one can tell that it's going to be, you know, some huge amount of rain months into the future. It's difficult to predict weather a, a week into the future, uh, let alone that. So, yeah, it's just the scheduled weather. Like Mr. Whittington says, they know the schedule, they know they're going to start the forest fires, and they know they're going to um, create a del deluge after. Once all the soil is dried up from the fire, they'll wash it all away. No more arable land. 